You can move your ass and your mind will follow. Uh, yeah, and I thought, that's, yeah, that's a good philosophy. Hi, my name's David Byrne. These are uh, three records that changed my life. I'm going to start with two of them, which was more or less about the same time. Uh, myself and uh, the other, some of the other former members of Talking Heads, we used to listen to uh, there was a Stooges record, uh, Iggy and the Stooges, and there was a song called I Want to Be Your Dog. Stooges record was raw energy, but very, very smartly done. It seemed to be complete id, completely, completely raw, uh, but it was also, in, in another way, very clever, the way it was done. Uh, there was a, a, obviously a great intelligence behind it. And then we might put on a Funkadelic record, and I remember listening to One Nation Under a Groove. We'd go from one to the other, and I, we didn't think those kind of things were incompatible. Both of those were big inspirations, and uh, I think at the time we all felt that there might be a way to to bring those, to find a meeting someplace in between those worlds. There was a lot of humor in uh, in the funkadelic track, and uh, and in their mythology, it made it clear that dance music could have a lot of ideas inside of it. It didn't just have to be just about dancing and partying. You could have lots of ideas and implications and insinuations in dance music. And I thought, oh, that was a big inspiration too. I thought, that's a possibility. You could do that. That, that works. You can do that. I think as George Clinton from Funkadelic would say, you can move your ass and your mind will follow. That's a good philosophy. If you can liberate the, the body and get the body to loosen up, then that's, that has a, uh, the effect of kind of loosening up the mind at the same time. Okay, give me a second, I'll get, check my memory in front of the third one. Um, wow. Oh, here's one, here's one. I was working on, a, uh, working on a film that I did in the mid-80s. I didn't have to work in the mornings, <laughs> so I, I went to a record store. There were still record stores in those days. And I picked out some Brazilian records that I'd never heard. I maybe had heard of the artist, but I had, there was no way to hear their music. Um, you, there wasn't an internet. You couldn't just, there was no way to find out. So I just bought some of the records. And one of them was um, a Caetano Veloso album. The music, it starts off uh, very kind of acoustic. I hear like a, maybe an Indian sitar. I hear some percussion, some odd, uh, some odd counter melodies coming in. Really, really innovative arrangement. I, I realized that my sense of musical history was not the only musical history, that there were parallel developments going on in other countries all over the world that were just as radical and interesting and profound as anything that I knew. So I knew that I had to revise my sense of musical history. I also realized that it's possible to write about something troubling and sometimes dark uh, in a way that is, uh, that is also very beautiful.